Is this photograph by Eddie Adams a work of art? How about this painting by Francisco Goya? Work of art? Let's compare them. And if you've watched the previous videos, you now have the tools to decide for yourself when something is a work of art or not. The opinion of experts doesn't matter. You get to be the judge. By way of reminder, what should we be looking for? Three things. First, a subject. That just means what the work of art is about. That's easy because both of these works are about the same thing and execution. Second, a content. Does the specific image we are looking at convey any kind of larger meaning to us? In this case, since we are looking specifically at an execution, is the artist for or against executions? Does the artist convey his feelings about the subject? Does he present the image of an execution as an example of some abstract idea or concept? And if so, what? Maybe something like brutality, for example? Well, you might be asking, how would we know what the artist is thinking? That's where the third component of a work of art comes in, form. All works have form, but not all works have artistic form. Artistic form is the kind of arrangement of the lines, shapes, and colors in such a way as to take a subject, interpret it, and transform it into a larger meaning. Good artistic form reveals to us the larger meaning. So let's look at the form of each of these works and see if it rises to the level of artistic form. What about the buildings in the background? Do they add or subtract anything to the photograph? Do they look like maybe shops and apartments? Therefore, is this a downtown scene? Are they blurred, slightly out of focus? Does that keep our eye from lingering in the background and instead encourage us to concentrate on what's going on in the foreground? What about the architecture looming in the background of the Goya painting? Is it recognizable? A church? Or perhaps a government building? Being in the background like that, do you get the sense that these victims have been dragged out away from civilization to be shot? Do the shadows in the street add anything to the significance of what's going on? Do they work to interpret the subject and provide us with any kind of larger insight? If not, that means they are irrelevant to our understanding of the picture. What about the shadows on the ground behind the soldiers? Do they seem dark and foreboding? Dark shadows cast by a dark, evil force? Do they help lend a threatening atmosphere to the executioners? If so, that means they were placed there for a purpose. Does it make any difference that the prisoner's shirt is checkered? Is that a vital detail that helps us understand what is going on? On the one hand, we know right away that he is in civilian clothes, but could the shirt just as well have been plain or striped? Compare the checkered shirt with the white shirt of the man in the middle. Does it immediately grab our attention? Is it like a magnet and our eye goes right to it? Does white carry with it a suggestion of purity and innocence? which in turn adds another dimension to our understanding. What kind of people shave their head like this guy? Monks? Ascetics? Since he is portrayed as a religious person, is it more likely that he is a criminal or an innocent victim? Is the expression on the soldier's face appropriate to what's happening? What kind of expression is it? A smile? A grimace? Is he flinching? Suppose this picture wanted to convey a larger idea, say brutality. Would a cold and unemotional expression more clearly separate the killer from the victim and thus be better able to get across that theme, brutality? Remember, all the parts have to actively work together to bring a larger theme to our attention. What about the expressions on these victims' faces? Terror? Is that a detail that invites us to sympathize with them? 
What about the fact that we can't even see the faces of the soldiers? Does that convey anything to us? Like maybe they have no personalities? Maybe they are inhuman? Just an impersonal military machine routinely slaughtering innocent victims? Does it help emphasize the theme of brutality that the general's arm is relaxed? Would it be more effective if his arm were straight, as if aggressively closing in on the guy? Compare the lines made by the rifles in the painting. Straight, forceful, thrusting in on the victims. Is this more effective at conveying the theme of brutality than if they were relaxed? What about the line running down the right side of the general's body? It's very erratic. Would it be more effective if it were smoother? By effective, I mean, would it make for more of a clearer separation of the general from the victim, so we get a clearer sense of the bad guys versus the good guys? And that would help reinforce the brutality theme. Compare the lines made by the soldiers' straps and their swords. Are they just random? Or are they arranged to lend a sort of relentless forward push to the killers? If so, don't they add to the forcefulness, to the oppressiveness of the killers? Another small detail, but it functions to characterize the bad guys. What about the outer edges of the picture? Blurred at the top and the right side? So when the eye wanders to those edges, there's nothing to stop it and bring you back to the main event. No clear-cut boundary, no framing edge, to help establish a sense of overall unity. What about the boundaries of the painting? Do they do anything for us? Like maybe keep pushing our eye back to the action? That's what artistic form does, remember. It directs and focuses our attention. What about the moment of action that is being portrayed? The shot is already fired. The arm is reflexing backward. The side of the victim's head is starting to cave in. There's no suspense, right? What's happening has already happened. What moment has Goya chosen to paint? The split second before the guns fire? So there's an element of suspense built into the painting. And that suspense helps grab our attention and hold it just a little bit longer. In the dead of night, the victims have been let out to be slaughtered. The mountain blocks any escape. The soldiers are firmly planted. They hunch forward relentlessly. They are inhuman, no faces, no personalities. Their rifles are thrust straight out at the victims. We know that the shots are just about to ring out. In other words, there's suspense and tension built into the scene. One man flings his arms up. What's his attitude? Despair? Or maybe defiance, like, go ahead, bastard, shoot me. I'm not going to grovel. The very uncertainty of the man's gesture adds to the suspense and increases the intensity of our attention. In fact, don't all the details work to grab our attention and pull us into the painting? Can we say the same thing about the photograph? The photograph probably grabs our attention quicker because it's more realistic, but does it keep our attention? Do the details work together to keep pulling us back into the picture? Or do you find some of the details, the background, the fuzzy shadows, etc., actually distracting, and you have to skip over them to understand what's going on? Is there any doubt about who Goya sympathizes with? Not really. He communicates loud and clear that these are helpless victims being slaughtered by an impersonal killing machine. And how does Goya communicate this to us? Through the form, the details, the arrangement of the lines and shapes, lights and shadows. In fact, the form communicates so effectively the theme of brutality that we really don't even need to know much about the actual event that this painting commemorates. The French occupied Madrid, and these are Spanish freedom fighters who were rounded up and brutally massacred on May 3rd, 1808. Their blood ran freely in the streets. So the good news is that you don't need me or any expert to tell you if this is a work of art or not. All you have to do is look for yourself. Does it have artistic form? 
Do the details work together to interpret the subject, to transform the subject, in this case, an execution, into an instance of a larger theme, let's say, brutality? And what about Eddie Adams' picture? Same subject and execution. Many will point out that this picture, which went viral in the news media at the time, was a turning point in public opinion against the war in Vietnam. It galvanized the anti-war movement because it seems to show an evil South Vietnamese general murdering a helpless civilian. Many of us have strong reactions to this photograph. It's a captivating document of an actual event. But if ever a picture cried out for more background information to put it in context, this is it. The man in the checkered shirt is not a civilian at all, but Nguyen Lim, a member of the Viet Cong, who were the local communist allies of the North Vietnamese Army. They had infiltrated South Vietnam during the ceasefire agreement of the Lunar New Year in January 1968 to launch a massive attack against cities and military installations, which became known as the Tet Offensive. In fact, he is the captain of a hit team who had just murdered seven families, including Chief of Police General Lowen's close personal advisor, Lieutenant Colonel Nguyen Tuen's family of six. His wife, a grandmother, and four children had just had their throats slit by this captain in the checkered shirt, who had changed in the cities to blend in, but who had been caught at the scene. There is, of course, a lot of personal sentiment many of us connect with the war in Vietnam. It was, and still is, a polarizing experience. And we can't help but bring those emotions to bear on a picture like this when we see it. Depending on what background information we know or don't know about this incident, and depending on whether we were for or against the war, we may see a cold-blooded murder, we may see justice being administered. But note that our prior opinions about the Vietnam War, any kind of emotional baggage we might dredge up that colors and influences our viewing experience is totally irrelevant to whether or not this is a work of art. Why? Because where does the meaning in a work of art come from? Not from outside the frame in the history books, but from inside the frame embedded in the form. So learn to look closely, learn to spot the form, learn to recognize when form is artistic form in the sense that it takes a subject like an execution and elevates it into a content, an abstract idea like brutality. When you can do that, you would be your own expert at spotting a work of art.